Okay. Oh, there you are, guys. Um, as always, my name is Noelle, and I was just reading a book about Edith Clark, but we'll talk about her later. But I want to show you some of my art, just in case you're new. I'm so curious! Because guess what, guys? I'm still raising money to go to science camp. Now I've been blown away with all of the people helping me. And I'm halfway to my goal, which is great. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. But getting the second half is going to be hard. <laughs> so stick with me, please. I need you. I need everybody. I need everybody in the whole wide world. You need to share more. Let me remind you how I'm raising money. I've made portraits of some of my favorite women in science. And you can buy my art. You can buy my art on note cards. You can get a ton of them all for $20. You can buy my art on a postcard. This is my super art. <laughs> you can get a postcard with two portraits on it for $5, like this one. You can get my art on a magnet. Magnets are $10 each. You can get a coffee mug. Coffee mugs are $25. They come with three different porches on them. One, two, three. And they come in different colors. You have six different color options. Can you do that? Black, white, light blue, light blue, and pink. And red. And red. And of course, you can always just make a straight up donation. Also, I'm starting a new product. If you go to my Etsy page and make a small donation, you can send me a picture that you want me to paint or draw. I'll, and I'll recreate it and I'll send you a digital copy. It's a great way to help support me. And also another way that helps way more than you realize is liking and subscribing and sharing my stuff on social media. Like my Facebook page, like my posts, share them with your friends, invite your friends to my Facebook page, check out my Instagram, come check out my YouTube channel, subscribe and like my videos, and comment, I love comments. Well now that we got that out of the way, you know how I said I was reading a book about Edith Clark. This is her picture. I was showing it when we were talking about note cards. Edith Clark was born in Maryland in 1883. Growing up, Edith, Edith struggled with learning disabilities. And if that wasn't hard enough, when she was only 12, both of her parents died. That means she was an or orphan. That's a rough way to start out life. But guess what? Edith didn't let that get her down. She rebounded. She she took her inheritance and used itself herself to put herself through college. Edith wanted to be an electric engineer. She got her bachelor's degree from Vasher. She studied at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Wisconsin Madison. Wisconsin. Say Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Wis. Wisconsin. Cheese. Actually, that's kind of uh, funny. It's funny for reasons you don't even know. Wisconsin. Wis cheese. <laughs> Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Madison. Madison. Now say it all together. Wisconsin Madison. Wis. Wish Cheese Madison. <sighs> I shouldn't have laughed at your joke. Now you won't drop it. Wisconsin Madison. Wisconsin Madison. I'm all right. Wisconsin Madison. She took a break for schoolwork for AT and T, where she worked as a human computer. You see. Back before mechanical computers, humans did all the work. Humans did all the math that our computers do now. 
you don't might you might not realize it, but your computer is doing calculations all the time. Back then, human computing is seen as women's work, and actual engineering was thought of for only for men. After a while, Edith started to try and finish her education. She left her job and and went and worked at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, otherwise known as MIT. In 1919, she became the first female graduate from MIT with a master's degree in electrical engineering. Here's the thing. Edith, here, Edith have a master's degree in 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 electrical engineering from MIT. That's a big whopping deal. But because she was a woman, she still could only find work as a human computer. No one would hire her as an electrical engineer. Electrical engineer. Engineer. She got on with General Electric. She ha They hired her to compute and train other women. While she was there, she invented a new graphical calculator. And jokes on General Electric, because they were giving her such a raw deal and were only having her work part-time. And that meant they missed out on claiming rights on her invention. She filed a patent in 1921. Now because of Edith's invention, equation with hyperbolic Functions. And I don't know what that means. And I don't know what that means. We're way more easy to solve. That sounds like a good thing. Even still, GE still wouldn't recognize her as an engineer. So she said, forget you. And she left. She moved to Turkey and to teach. And she traveled all around the world. But as the saying goes, Sometimes you don't know what you got until it's gone. And once she was gone, GE realized how much they needed her. When she returned back to the U.S., GE snatched her up quick. And they finally, officially made her electrical engineer. Over the years, Edith kept being amazing at her job. She was constantly creating better ways of getting equations done. She made it easier for engineers to manage large, complicated user systems or stuff. I don't know. Power systems. Power systems. And she figured out how to get the most power. Power. Out of transmission line, Edith finally retired from General Electric in 1945, and she went to teach in the University of Texas, where she gained a lot of respect in the engineering field. In 1948, she became the first female fellow in the American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Edith was a brown breaker. She broke the record. Not only in engineering, but proving that women can do things like what men do too. That science shouldn't be a boys club. It can be a girls, boys and girls club. <laughs> and so that's the story about Edith Clark. Well, what did you think of Edith Clark? Well, I think about this. Oh goodness, here we go again. What's that supposed to be? Them snatching Edith Clark. <laughs> I still have the order of business. I want to start giving shout outs to things I think are cool and I want you to check it. So in honor of Edith Clark, I want to tell you about a really cool group called the Electric Girls. Electric Girl recognizes 
that only three out of ten engineers in the U.S. are women, and out out of and only one out of ten engineers in the U.S. and are women of color. And we want to see some better stats. So electric girls are creating learning spaces that are for girls only, where they get the attention, the safety, and the freedom to learn about science, technology, and engineering, and math, especially when it comes to electricity. They have a really cool summer camp, and they're really good at figuring out funding for those who might have trouble paying for it. I would love to go to electric girls summer camp. But it's all the way in New Orleans, and I'm nowhere near there. But if you're watching this, and you are near there, maybe Electric Girls is for you. Or if you're a grown up, maybe you can check out your website, or their website, and see how you can help. I know you can make a donation or buy a t-shirt. I'm going to link to their website down below. Definitely check them out. And once again, I'm still selling out to go in science camp. So head over to my Hudson page. See if there's anything you're interested. I really appreciate your help. Bye, guys. Walk in the hole.